Well, for more on this fight against Boko Haram, I spoke a short time ago with Peter Pham. He's the director of the Atlantic Council's Africa Center. Nigerian army, as you we've discussed often before, Peter, hasn't been very successful so far in tackling Boko Haram. Do you think that these Chadian and Nigerian forces uh, might do any better? Well, the Chadian and Nigerians are certainly forming up and providing, if you will, an anvil. But uh, rather surprisingly, and I'll admit my surprise, but the Nigerian forces in the last three to four weeks have actually stepped up their game. They've retaken close to two dozen towns that had fallen some months ago to Boko Haram. So something is new in the air, and they're certainly scoring successes that we hadn't seen in the preceding months and years. And do you think these other troops then coming across the border will give sustenance to the Nigerian forces, uh, perhaps help in this? Very much so, because previously Boko Haram has relied on the borders. They've used them for strategic depth, because Boko Haram draws its support primarily from ethnic groups that transcend those borders. So they blend in, retreat, and the Nigerians haven't been able to pursue. And the neighboring countries, Niger, Cameroon, and Chad, have been either unwilling or unable to pursue. Now that the borders have been, if you will, wiped clean by the governments, not in the sense of surrendering sovereignty, but allowing each other to operate, we're creating, if you will, a, an anvil on one side and a hammer on the other. And Boko Haram has seen remarkable territorial losses in the last few weeks. I want to pick up on the words of that American uh, military official there on the concerns even that far south of what is happening up in Libya. Are you seeing, starting to see movement there? Very much so. And there's a greater danger now that Boko Haram has sworn formal allegiance to the so-called Islamic State. As we know, the international community is finally awakened to the danger that the Islamic State poses, and it's making life more difficult for those seeking to travel to Syria or Iraq. The problem is the Islamic State has three affiliate groups in Libya. The border between Libya and Niger is literally a hop and a skip over the Salvador Pass. And then from the Niger's border with Nigeria has been largely porous. So it will be very easy for these groups to move south and join the fight there with Boko Haram. What about Boko Haram's intentions? Because until now, uh, it has been locally focused. This hasn't been an organization that has been focused particularly on global or Western interests. Could that change too, do you think? Yes, two very quick points, Caddy. First, Boko Haram is a group that has changed very rapidly. It has transformed itself in just an arc of five years from a very local, brutish, but localized extremist movement into a jihadist group, into a terrorist group, into a full-fledged insurgency. So this latest evolution is just the latest. Second point is that there is a real danger that it might change with the foreign fighters and foreign resources coming in. On the other hand, the downside for Boko Haram might be that it loses those Nigerian roots and loses the support it's had. So it, time alone will tell whether this is going to be a step forward or back for Boko Haram as an organization. Okay, Peter Pham, thanks very much for coming in. Thank you.